welcome to Woman Crush Wednesday, a series where I drink wine and talk about the women I like. And by drink wine, I mean that I usually drink wine. But today I'm drinking my favorite cider, which is Recurterleg. This month's crush is on Wilma Mankiller, a Native American activist and also the first woman to ever be the chief of the Cherokee Nation. Wilma Pearl Mankiller was born on November 18, 1945 in Telequa, Oklahoma to a full-blooded Cherokee father and a white mother. Wilma was the sixth of 11 children and their last name Mankiller referred to a traditional Cherokee rank. The Mankiller family were farmers that lived on Mankiller Flats in Oklahoma without electricity, indoor plumbing, or telephones until 1956 when they moved to San Francisco as a part of the Bureau of Indian Affairs relocation program. However, they ended up living in a housing project and continued to struggle financially, and it's about this time that Wilma later wrote that her family had experienced their own trail of tears, which her great-grandfather suffered himself. At the age of 17 in 1963, Wilma married her first husband, an Ecuadorian business student named Hector Hugo Olaya de Bardi. The couple moved to Oakland, California and had two daughters, Felicia, who was born in 1964, and Gina, who was born in 1966. Around this time, political awareness and social activism were moving through the country in huge waves throughout many different groups. Wilma returned to school to earn her bachelor's in social sciences, which she later received from Flaming Rainbow University in Stillwell, and worked as a coordinator for Indian programs for Oakland Public Schools. She also joined other Native American activists who called themselves the Indians of all tribes in the occupation of Alcatraz Island from November of 1969 to June of 1971. After Alcatraz Penitentiary was closed in 1963, many Red Power activists believed that according to the Treaty of Fort Laramie, the island belonged to Native Americans. The terms of the treaty did state that all retired, abandoned, or out of use federal land was supposed to be returned to the Native people from whom it was taken. The occupation was officially terminated in 1971 by the U.S. government, which does not surprise me whatsoever. Though the occupation caused a lot of controversy and ultimately ended without any reclamation of the land, many still praise it as a success. It did end up bringing a lot of international attention to Native American activists and their issues. Six years later, in 1977, Wilma and Hector divorced. She and their daughters moved back to Oklahoma, back onto Mankiller Flats. She was doing graduate work when, in 1979, she and a friend hit each other in a fatal car accident. Her friend passed away, but Wilma didn't know for weeks as she was in the hospital having multiple surgeries done and then recovering. She has said of the aftermath that she no longer feared death and that she came out of the hospital a new person, less angry and more focused. She kind of has a tragic hero backstory almost. In 1983, Mankiller became the first woman to ever be elected Deputy Chief of the Cherokee Nation alongside Ross Swimmer, who was then serving his third consecutive term as Chief. You go, Wilma! She founded the Community Development Department for the Cherokee Nation, striving to improve the lives of her people through better opportunities for education, jobs, and healthcare. She worked very closely with a man named Charlie Soap, who she had known beforehand. He was a very close family friend, and in 1986, she and Charlie got married. In 1985, Swimmer resigned, and Mankiller assumed the position of chief, becoming the first woman to ever hold the position in the Cherokee Nation. She faced a lot of backlash from the male-dominated administration who favored political tradition. However, in 1987, Mankiller ran her own campaign for election and won by her own right. She was re-elected in 1991 and won by a landslide with 83% of the vote. During her time as chief, Mankiller brought the Cherokee Nation together through community development projects, creating spaces for men and women to work together for the betterment of their community. With the help of money from the Bureau of Indian Affairs self-help programs, Mankiller's administration established a market for tribally owned businesses, improved infrastructure, and built a hydroelectric facility. She also revived the tribal Sequoia High School and saw the Cherokee population more than double. Mankiller also signed a historic agreement with the Bureau of Indian Affairs in which the government surrendered millions of dollars of federal funding to the nation. 
Toward the end of her final term, the Cherokee Nation filed a lawsuit against Mankiller for the embezzlement of $300,000. She was accused of paying out politicians as they were about to leave office, but the case was eventually dropped due to a vote by the Tribal Council. After she left office, Mankiller was invited to teach at Dartmouth College, where in 1991 she received an honorary degree. In 1993, she was inducted into the National Women's Hall of Fame, and in 1998, President Bill Clinton awarded her the Presidential Medal of Freedom. Though she was mostly a strong leader of her nation and an advocate for Native American and human rights, Mankiller was in poor health. She had multiple issues including a kidney transplant, cancer, and lymphoma. She continued to fight for the Cherokee Nation until 2010 when in March it was reported that she had been diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. Less than a month later, Wilma Mankiller passed away from the disease in her home. Upon hearing the news of her death, President Barack Obama released a statement that pretty much sums up exactly how I feel about Wilma Mankiller. As the Cherokee Nation's first female chief, she transformed the nation-to-nation -nation relationship between the Cherokee Nation and the federal government and served as an inspiration to women in Indian country and across America. Her legacy will continue to encourage and motivate all who carry on her work. Before I close out this video, I just want to make two little announcements. The first is basically what I said in my Queen and Zynga video. I don't want to be your first or primary source on Wilma Mankiller. I'm leaving links in the description box that you can check out. Please, please go listen to Native American and Cherokee voices on this subject because they know more about her than I do, I'm sure. They have different perspectives than I do. Don't take what I say as the only word on the subjects of these women of color. Speaking of women of color, this is my second announcement. Somewhere late in Vlogmas, I realized that four out of the five Women Crush Wednesdays that I had done before Wilma Mankiller were white. This series is something that I wanted to be accessible and relatable and representative of all types of women. But in talking about four out of five white women, I feel like I may have alienated some of the people that I wanted to celebrate and celebrate with. So, in 2017, I am going to make a concerted effort to put as few white women in the polls for the next Woman Crush Wednesday as possible. To note, I also want to talk about women that are alive, because out of the six that I've now talked about, only one is currently living. That being said, check out the cards for the next Woman Crush Wednesday video. Sarah and I will not be doing a Black History Month like we did last year. However, I am definitely going to be doing a Black History Month Woman Crush Wednesday. I also had trouble sticking to just three women for the poll, so there may be like 10 or something. I don't know, you'll see when you look at the poll. But please encourage everybody you know to vote so that I don't end up with a tie. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. In the comments below, let me know what your thoughts are on Wilma Mankiller, and please do feel free to leave suggestions for other Woman Crush Wednesdays. Sarah and I will be seeing you in the next two videos. You're welcome.